About a year ago, I recreated some scenes from The Last of Us and it was a fantastic way to practice some of my camera work, practice my lighting and, you know, show off some really dodgy acting. Anyway, recently I picked up some new damn light Parvo Slim lights. I got the 120C and the 60CL and I thought maybe we could recreate some scenes again because it's a really fantastic way to get to know your piece of gear and just get better at what you do. So today we're going to film three completely new scenes. We're going to pair these two lights with my existing lighting kit and just see how they complement and what they can do on their own. So stick around, let's have some fun and let's break down some lighting setups. Our first scene is going to be from The Gentleman. Now this is a 10 out of 10 show on Netflix and an equally fantastic spin-off to the original movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Anyway, I'm going to be playing a big old Brutus boy here who's about to have a bit of a run in with Eddie. This is a pretty moody scene. Now there's not a lot of light going on there's lots of dark home decor there's a couple lamps and the rest of the light coming in is natural ambient street light coming in through the balcony on big boy mcavoy that little edge light that he's got going on that is coming from a kitchen lamp now i did take liberties with this and i went for a more blue cyberpunk like there's a television in the room just purely because i thought it looked cool so to set the scene let's kill all the lights i'm on the nanly cap which is absolutely fantastic for using everything wirelessly now this is pretty dark so i'm in a dark room the blinds are shut our first key light is going to be the Nanlite Parvo Slim 120C. Now I've got this on double diffusion and a grid, and it's also shooting through the diffusion of a five in one reflector, just to make it extra soft. And I've got the grid on there, so it's not spilling onto the background because this is a pretty moody shot. So that's given us a bit of a base to work from. So the next light we're gonna turn on is going to be the Parvo bulb, which is just mimicking that wall lamp. Now you notice there is a bit of a hard line there. I have some old envelopes from a gift that actually I was sent from Ben and Anna. So thank you so much guys. Could have done this scene without you. <laughs> I just wanted to mimic what was in the original shot. So if I take those away, you'll see that it just goes to a kind of a much more boring, just broader light. And I think by putting these up, there we go. I think by balancing those there, it just gives a much better look to the shot, a little bit more dynamic, a bit more contrast. It just looks good, that's all. So now we've got those two, it's time to set up our edge light. Like I said, I took liberties with this and I went for a little bit more of a cyberpunk television feel. So this is the 60CL. Now I have the Parvo Slim set up on a Coupo Coupo. Oh, you've heard me talk about these to no end degree. They are absolutely fantastic. If you're in a small space like this, getting stands and stuff off the floor and just having a single vertical column or even horizontal from wall to wall, fantastic. Get some if you don't have them. Anyway, I've got this set up double diffusion and a grid because I want to control exactly where this is going. I don't want light spilling onto the background. I just want it to glance across my face. So we've got our key, our practical and our edge light. So what's the final step? Well, it's actually already in play. Let's take away. The final step that is this big old negative feel from Coupo. so this floppy is just taking out any ambient bounce from the ceiling so you see there's a lot more light getting around it just doesn't look as good i've got a white ceiling dark walls so by bringing this floppy in it's just cutting out all that unwanted bounce make it a lot more moody but it's also if i put it back where it should be it's taking out some of the rim line as well if you see if i move back and i take that away it just it's not what I'm going for. If I step into it and I bring it back, that's so much more moody. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going for. It's all the little things like adding negative feel, like adding an extra layer of diffusion, the homemade cutters that really go into making a full shot just really come together. Personally, negative feel and cutting light is a favorite of mine. I think it looks fantastic and it goes a long way. Now for the camera nerds, this was shot on a Sony FX6 and a 35mm G Master at f1.4. I shot at 1.4 because I'm working in about a 4x4 4 4 meter space here and I think the original shot was probably in a size at least twice the size if not bigger and I think they're probably closer to a, a 50 or a 65mm lens. So I had to work with the limitations that I have but at f1.4 it just gives me a little bit of separation from the background to try and mimic the original shot. Anyway, before we move along to the next scene, let's take a look at me playing Big Boy Barry. I uh, think we did a pretty solid job of this one. To find out who won the fight, make sure you go and watch the show. Anyway, for our next scene, we're going to move along to something I'm currently watching and enjoying far less than The Gentleman, and that is this scene from The Handmaid's Tale. I'm currently three seasons deep, and it is just a struggle. It's, uh, it's beautifully shot, but it is a slow burn. I digress. Anyway, this shot from The Handmaid's Tale has her main character in a car, and she's trying to get out of the garage. The garage is frozen shut, so she's in the car. She's trying to do a burnout, you know, to get out and all that. 
Anyway, in the scene, there are raised windows at the top of the garage door and then one at the back of the room. So it's letting this nice, even light from both sides of the room come in, but it's still just quite focused on where our handmaid is. So to emulate this light, what I've done, you're gonna get sick of me saying this, but I've got a coupole going wall to wall, suspending a Parvo Slim 120C in front of me. That's got double diffusion and a grid coming down here. And that's just using this part of the car as a cutter to cut out that light and just give me that, that shadow that we can see. So depending on where I go, it gets a little bit moodier. Up the back, we've got the 60CL. This is also suspended by a coupole, double diffusion and grid. I wanted to focus that through the window and that's giving us that little bit of light across here. I didn't want to take the grid off because if I did, I've got a white car. It would just give too much bounce to the back of the garage door. I wanted that to be fairly subdued. I've also got a Forza 60, which has just given us this little edge across here and just a slight bit of edge. You can kind of see it on the, the shoulder of the chair and my shoulder there. Doing the extra things like using cutters, grids, having the extra Forza 60 to give a little bit of edge light and a bit of hard light. That's the things that will take your images to the next level. Anyway, let's take one last look at it. Here's the original and here is mine. Anyway, moving on, uh, Jed, what show is the next scene from? Gonna do something from Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Amazon. I watched this a couple months ago, absolutely loved it. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go watch it. Anyway, it's just gonna be a simple scene. Both of them, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, are lying on the bed having a peculiar conversation about the type of bed. So here is what the original scene looks like. And here is my adaptation. Mm. <sighs> mm. This bed is amazing. Mm. Horse hair. What? It's made out of horse hair. <laughs> <laughs> How do they get the hair? I think they shave them. Wow. Considering I was acting as two characters, camera operating remotely and uh, lighting the whole thing, I think I did a pretty good job. It could have been better, don't get me wrong, and I think if I was better at coloring, it probably would have matched a lot better, but hey, for now, I think we did a pretty good job. We've got to keep in mind on these Hollywood sets, the rooms are much bigger, some that are on sound stages, they have a lot more space to work with. I'm currently in a four by four room, and I'm having to work around with what I've got. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a message from our sponsor. <coughs> I don't have a sponsor, but if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to the video and maybe even follow me on Instagram. That stuff helps me to no degree. You'll never understand just how thankful we are unless you do this yourself. Anyway, back to the video. So the first light I set up is the Nanlite Parvo Slim 120C. This is on 15% at 2800 Kelvin. This is just giving us room tone everywhere. Very slight, little touch everywhere to work off as a bit of a base. Once I had the room tone set, if we look at the original frame, there's clearly some bedside lamps on each of the tables next to the bed that are giving our main source of light to the faces of our characters. So on this side, I've got my actual bedside lamp turned on. It's just an Ikea Sonos sound bar light thing. And then I've got a Parvo Tube 15C next to that, just giving a little bit of punch for, for one character. And then on this side, I've got a Parvo bulb. Now that bulb is bouncing into a five-in-one reflector. So not only is it giving us the hard light on the face, it's also giving a bit of soft feel to the, the shadowy side of my face as well. Then up the back, what we've got, we've got a big negative feel. Now this is just making sure we're kind of sucking out any light bouncing off that rear wall. We want it to be nice and contrasty and just give a little bit more of a mood, a bit more of a tone to it. Then in front of that, we've got the Neonlight Parvo Slim 60CL. This is only at 2% and this is just making you look exactly where I want you to look, giving a little bit more of a pop to the, the subjects of our scene. Now the camera for this scene was the Sony A7S III with the 35mm G Master. Now 35 was a little bit too wide and the 50 was a little bit too tight. I think they probably shot on a 40 or something about that. So we just had to zoom in a little bit in post, but we've got the A7S III rigged on to a Coupo Coupole. These things are absolutely fantastic. When you're working in tight space like a bedroom like this, I use them all the time. That's how I've got the uh, 60CL rigged up at the back as well with a supervisor clamp. One last thing to note, this uh, this 40 inch CCM from Coupo that's holding the 120C, this is on a quick action roller base or something like that. I forget what they call it, but it's absolutely fantastic. I'll link it below. This thing just means that when you're solo operating, you can just move it so simply. I've got floorboards. I don't have to worry about denting floors and things. And as a solo operator, it just makes it so handy. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Today's suggestion is going to be go and watch The Gentleman. Go and watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith and maybe avoid The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Big fat thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.
Bye. Look, back and I'm better than ever. Wow. I think I got a vendetta. Oh, now they call me, I seen her. Yeah. All of those times getting severed.